Hi everyone, welcome back to chemistry. In this video, we're gonna continue talking about chapter five, uh, specifically something called stoichiometry. Um, that's how you say this crazy looking word over here, stoichiometry. Um, and stoichiometry is essentially using these balanced chemical equations, right? We just did a bunch of work with balancing, balancing these chemical equations. Um, and the numerical relationships that they show, right, the ratio of our reactants and products um, to solve problems. Um, so what do I mean by that? So looking up here at um, our last example with polyatomic ions, we balanced this chemical equation. And I want you to think about what does it mean to balance a chemical equation? Why do we do it? What, does, what do I mean when I say that an equation is balanced? Um, and remember what I mean is that on the left hand side, whatever we put in needs to come out, right? It can look different, but it still needs to all be there. All those atoms need to be there. So that's the goal of balancing and the point of balancing. Um, but what you get at the end of all that balancing with your balanced chemical equation is you get the ratio, right, that these things react in. And that's given by the coefficient. So if I put in one of these and two of these, I'm going to get out two of these and one of these, right? That's the ratio. Um, so stoichiometry is using that ratio that things react in in these balanced chemical equation, keyword balanced, right? Make sure they're balanced first. Um, in order to figure out like how much of a substance you can make, how much of your product you can make, or say you know you made a certain amount of product and you want to figure out, well, you know, what re what ratio of reactants did I need to put in to get to that product, um, and, and, you know, why did it work, and, and so on. Um, to, to understand stoichiometry, because it can, it can be a little tricky at first, what I like to think about is recipes. So, because you actually do stoichiometry all the time without realizing it if you make recipes. Um, so if you bake or cook and you're using recipes, you're actually doing stoichiometry, you just don't know it. So over here, I've got a recipe for chocolate chip cookies. Um, and it's, you know, a bunch of ingredients that go in to make my chocolate chip cookies. Um, so sometimes, right, you don't know how many chocolate chip cookies you cookies you can make. Maybe you can't make the full recipe that's supposed to make 24 chocolate chip cookies because you don't have enough of one ingredient. Um, so these, what we can do in that case is we can set up these things called conversion factors, which is just a fancy way of saying fractions. Um, fractions. Let's make a note of that. Or ratios, right? Fractions are a ratio, which is a conversion factor. All of these, you know, mean the same thing. <laughs> They all mean the same thing. Um, <clears throat> but the, the, the idea is we can set up these, these fractions or these conversion factors to determine how many cookies we can actually make with the ingredients that we have at home so we don't have to go to the store and buy new stuff. So the way we do that is we, we literally set up a fraction. So over here, you can see I've set up a fraction here where I've got 24 chocolate chip cookies on top and 3 fourths cup of butter on the bottom, right? And you can flip these conversion factors. So anytime you're writing a, a conversion factor or a fraction, you can actually flip the top and the bottom. Um, and, and that becomes important when you're solving problems because it, uh, it helps you get to the right units at the end. So we'll talk about that and it'll make more sense, hopefully. Um, but just know for now, anytime you're writing these conversion factors, you can flip them. Where, for instance, maybe I have 3 fourths cup butter on the top and 24 chocolate chocolate chip cookies on the bottom. Really hard to say that today. Um, so let's let's put this in into an example to actually see what this looks like. So say you need in your recipe, right, the recipe calls for two and a fourth cup flour, which is um, in decimal form, that's 2.25 uh, cups of flour to make 24 cookies. But you only have one and a half or 1.5 cups of flour. So you're like, well, I don't, it's okay that I can't make 24, but I need maybe, maybe you're going to a friend's house and you know you need at least, you know, maybe a dozen would be nice to have. So you want to know, okay, how many cookies can I make? All right, so the way you're going to do this is you're going to start with what you have. Start with what you have and then figure out what your goal is, right? Where do I want to get to? What, do, what am I given and where do I want to get to? What am I given and where do I want to get to? So in this case, we start with 1.5 cups of flour. That's how much flour we have. Can't change that, right? We can go to the store and get more, but you're trying not to, right? So we start with 1.5 cups of flour. 
and then you're going to multiply by your conversion factor. And right, what's a conversion factor, right? That's just a fancy way of saying fraction. It's, oops, conversion factor. It's a factor, okay, a factor because it's being multiplied, that you can multiply your, uh, get your starting amount by in order to get to your ending uh, unit. So let's try this out. So we've got our conversion factor in the middle there is um, chocolate chip cookies on top and two and a fourth cup flour on the bottom because that's what the recipe calls for, right? In order to make 24 cookies, you need to put in a 2.25 cups of flour. And this probably looks familiar, right? We've been doing this with unit conversions um, for all quarter now, right? If I said um, 1,000 milligrams, right, equals one gram, we know we can split that into conversion factors, right? We can do 1,000 milligrams on top and one gram on the bottom, or we can do one gram on top and 1,000 milligrams on the bottom. It's the same idea, right? Um, and you just pick which of these conversion factors you want to use um, based on where you want to get to. Do I want to end up in milligrams or do I want to end up in grams, right? Same idea here. Right now, I'm wondering how many cookies I can make. So cookies has to be on the top so that I can cancel out, cancel out cups of flour, okay? So let's go ahead and can cancel out our cups of flour, right? And then we're left with, on the top right, always, um, we're left with our number of cookies, how many cookies we can make. Um, so you gotta do that calculation, 1.5 times 24. 1.5 1 1 times 24 is gonna give us 36, and then we gotta divide by 2.25, which is gonna give us 16 cookies. So cool, you're in the clear. You wanted at least a dozen to bring to your friend's house. Otherwise, you probably would wanna just go to the store and get something else. But um, yeah, you're gonna make enough cookies to bring to your friend's house. So what's the point of this for chemistry? Well, we can actually use these balanced chemical equations to uh, solve problems in the same way that we can with a recipe, right? Um, and, and that depends on using conversion factors. So you gotta get used to using these conversion factors. So let's practice this a little bit. So I've got this balanced chemical equation here and you always wanna just double check that it's balanced. Um, in this case, you can trust me, it is balanced, but you do always wanna do kind of like a quick double check because these stoichiometry problems will not work if your equation is not balanced. So that's always, always, always your first step is to double check that it's balanced. Um, so this question asks, how many CO2 molecules will form if we start with 10 molecules of O2? Okay, so in order to solve this problem, you have to have a balanced chemical equation. So I will never ask you that question and not give you the balanced chemical equation. I might give you... I should, I should revise that. I might give you an unbalanced chemical equation, and then you need to balance it first, and then you can answer this question. Um, but you'll always have a, a, a chemical equation to work from, to work with. All right, so we want to know, okay, we're in lab, and we want to know, all right, how much CO2 can I make if I start with 10 molecules of O2? So what this first part is asking is to write a conversion factor that can help you solve the problem. So what does that mean? Well, let's break this down a little bit. We start with, so we're given, right, 10 molecules of O2. And our goal, or where we want to get to, is molecules of CO2. So how are we going to connect what we're given to our goal? How do we connect those things? Well, get in our uh, balanced chemical equation, we can see that the recipe, right, for how many CO2 molecules form from some number of O2 is given by these coefficients here, right? So ignoring the other parts of my equation right now because they're not relevant, right? The only things I'm worried about are CO2 and O2. So in my head, I just start ignoring those other things. And I'm like, okay, well, what's the ratio? What's my, what's my recipe, right? What's the ratio that O2 reacts with 
um, my other, th what's the ratio in this reaction? Well, it says I put in five molecules of O2 and I get out four molecules of CO2. So that's an equality that we can write, just like we wrote one up here for 24 cookies equals 2.25 cups of flour. That's our ratio, right? So we can say, all right, well, we have a recipe that says five molecules of O2 is gonna make four molecules of CO2. And I'm just gonna abbreviate, I'm gonna start abbreviating molecules um, like this, M-O-L-E-C. Okay, so this is not a conversion factor, right? This is an equality. This is an equality. But you can write a conversion factor, whoops, from any equality. So let's go ahead and write our conversion factor. So remember, with any equality, we can, we can put whichever one, the left or the right, on top, and then the other one goes on the bottom. So for this case, right, if we start with, we're given 10 molecules of O2, I know that that's going to be the first thing I write. So 10 molecules of O2 is my first um, factor. And then my next one is going to be whatever conversion factor I come up with. So if I have O2, whoops, O2, and remember, if there's nothing under your um, number, then it's just over an imaginary one, right? So this whole thing is in the numerator. All right, so if we have molecules of O2, how are we going to cancel out those molecules of O2? Yeah, you got to put them on the bottom, right? So molecules of O2 needs to go on the bottom. And then I guess the only other thing I have is molecules of CO2 in my equality. So that's got to go on the top. <clears throat> All right, so, um, but how many, right? How many molecules of O2 versus CO2? Well, that's given by your chemical equation, right? So, right? We wrote from our chemical equation, we wrote this equality, and now we can use that equality as a conversion factor. So uh, five molecules of O2 are going to go in, and four molecules of CO2 are going to come out. Four to five. That's the ratio those two react in. All right, now we can cancel out our molecules of O2, and we're left with molecules of CO2. Pretty cool, right? So I actually put the conversion factor here. Um, so four molecules of CO2 on top and five molecules of O2 on the bottom. And now we gotta solve that, that, that equation. So we've got 10 times four divided by five, right? Just solving this out, 10 times four divided by five, that's gonna give us eight. Eight what? Molecules of CO2. All right, so that's how many molecules of CO2 you can make if you start off with 10 molecules of O2. All right, let's try this one more time. Um, so this time, we've got, a, we've got the same balanced chemical equation, but we're asking a different question. So we're going to use our, our same balanced chemical equation um, to solve a different problem. So this says how many C2H4 molecules, so looking at this one here now, are needed to produce 16 molecules of CO2. Okay, so now we know how many molecules of CO2 we, we wanna make. Our, we have a goal, right? Our goal is to make 16 molecules of CO2. So that's what we're given, right? We're given that we're, we have the goal of making 16 molecules of CO2. And we wanna know, okay, well, how many molecules of C2H4 do we need to put in to make those 16 molecules of CO2? So what's a conversion factor that we can write to solve this problem? Well, it, we know we're gonna start with CO2. So CO2, 16 molecules of CO2 is gonna go on our first, in our first train track. Now we gotta figure out, okay, well, what's going here, right? So for our conversion factor, um, let's write an equality first. So we know from our balanced chemical equation that 2C2H4, oh, oh sorry, two molecules, whoops, molecules 
of C2H4. Remember to keep that unit in there, okay? Two molecules of C2H4 is going to give us how many molecules of CO2? Yeah, four molecules of CO2. We know that from our balanced chemical equation, right? From our recipe. <laughs> um, so that's an equality we can write. And then that can be written in two ways, right? We could write it with two molecules of C2H4 on top and uh, four molecules CO2 on the bottom. Or we can write it with four molecules CO2 on top and two molecules C2H4 on the bottom. Okay, those are the two conversion factors we can write from this equality here. Remember, you can always write two conversion factors from any given equality. And I've just um, switched which one goes on top. All right, so <clears throat> for this problem, looking here down at number two, what do I need? Which of these conversion factors, this one or this one, needs to go here, and why? Yeah, we need the one with CO2 on the bottom. We need this one because we want CO2 to cancel out. We want molecules of CO2 to cancel out, and we want to end up with molecules of C2H4. So we're going to put four molecules CO2. Where did I get four from? Balanced chemical equation, right. Always, always, always check your balanced chemical equation for the ratio. And then two molecules of C2H4 on top. All right, and then the reason that we did that, the reason we chose that one, and let me clean this up just a tad. Um, the reason we chose that conversion factor is because now we have CO2 on the bottom and on the top in these uh, factors. So these can cancel out right? The numerator cancels out with the denominator. And then we're left with molecules of C2H4. So how many molecules? Let's see. So we got 16 times 2. So multiplying everything in the numerator and then dividing by uh, the product of what's in the denominator, right? So 32 divided by 4 is 8. 8 molecules of C2H4 can, uh, or no, we need to put in eight molecules of C2H4 in order to get out 16 molecules of CO2. All right, so I know this can be pretty confusing at first. Remember that in your textbook, there are a bunch of practice problems at the end of the chapter that also have the answers. So you can try those out. Um, I highly recommend working on some of those if um, this isn't making much sense yet. Um, and then, you know, always feel free to ask me questions if you have any. All right, I'll see you in the next video.